Okay class, today we are going to discuss the frequency distribution. And in order to begin that discussion, uh, we will define the frequency distribution. So as you can see above, a frequency distribution is just a list or a table containing your data values and along with those data values you have their corresponding frequency of occurrence in the data set. So you have a data set and let's say you have a data value of 7 and that data value occurs let's say 5 times in your data set. Well, you'd list the data value 7 and beside it or somehow corresponding to it you'd also list the frequency of 7's occurrence which is 5. Okay, so for this example, this is the first example and this will be an example where we're going to have the data ungrouped. Basically each value will have its own class or category. And um, we're going to use this data set. Okay, so now that we have our data set, the first thing I usually do, which is not necessary, but uh, it kind of helps a little bit. The first thing I do is I list the data in ascending order. So here's the data set rearranged so that it's in uh, ascending order. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each of those values and I'm going to put those values into this table. All right, so let's see. The first value I see this is 6. So I'm going to put the 6 in the table here. Next value is 7. We're going to put the 7 in the table. And then we have 12. So we're going to put 12 in the table. We also have 16. So 16 goes up in the table. 17 goes in the table. 18, 19, 21, and 25. So that would be a list of all the values that I see in my data set. Um, so what we're going to do now, once we have the, val the data values listed, we're going to count how many of each value they are and we're going to record that as the values frequency so let's see we have only a single six so on the frequency for six in the same row as six we're going to put a one moving on to the next data value I see that we have two sevens so the frequency of seven now is two because I have two sevens in my data set so I'm going to record the frequency of seven to be two and then we have one, two, three, four twelves. So twelve occurs a lot. Twelve has a frequency of four and so forth. So we see sixteen has a frequency of one. Sixteen only occurs once. Seventeen has a frequency of two. Eighteen has a frequency of one. Nineteen has a frequency of two. Twenty-one has a frequency of one. And twenty-five has a frequency of one. And that is basically it. That is how you construct a frequency distribution for ungrouped data. So now we'll do an example with group data. Um, we are going to need two definitions in order to do this. The first uh, is the definition of a lower class limit. Now because we're going to group the data together, we're going to have to define where that group, where each specific group begins and ends. Now where the group begins, or the smallest data value that can go in a specific group, is called the lower class limit. Where the class ends, or the largest data value that can go in a specific group, is called the upper class limit. So with the class limits, we are going to go ahead and group our data. Okay. So the first group, I'm going to start it at 5. So the lower class limit of the first group will be 5 so we'll put that into our table now the first group is, or class is going to end at the value of 8 so the upper class limit for my first class I'm going to call 8 so I'm going to put 8 up here in the table as the upper class limit the next class since the first class ends at 8 I'm going to start my next class at 9 so the lower class limit for the second class will be 9 put that in the table and then the upper class limit for the second class will be 12. The lower class limit for the third class will be 13. The upper class limit for the third class will be 16. The lower class limit for the fourth class will be 17. 
The upper class limit for the fourth class will be 20. The lower class limit for the fifth class will be 21. The upper class limit for the fifth class will be 24. Lower class limit for the sixth class will be 25. And the upper class limit for the sixth class will be 28. So once we have all our groups or classes set up, what we're going to do is we're going to go through our data and we're going to see how many data values fall into those classes and we're going to record those numbers as the frequencies of our class. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so numbers that range from 5 to 8, the first class. Let me see, I see numbers that range from 5 to 8 here. I see 1, 2, 3 of them. There's a single 6 and two sevens. Those are all in the class that ranges from 5 to 8. So, the frequency for the first class is going to be 3. Now, moving on to the second class. The second class ranges from 9 to 12. So I'm going to look at all the values in my table ranging from 9 to 12. And let me see here. Well, I only see those four 12s. So the frequency for the second class is going to be 4 because there are only four values between 9 or between 9 and 12 inclusive. Now, the next class, the class that goes from 13 to 16. Hmm, I only see that one 16. So in that class, I'm going to record the frequency as being 1. The next class is the class 17 to 20. Hmm, well, let's see, I have two 17s, an 18, and two 19s. Those are all in that class from uh, 17 to 20, and that is five values. So this class has a frequency of five. And the next class is from 21 to 24. There's only one 21, so that class has a frequency of one. And the last class goes from 25 to 28. So I'm going to record the frequency for the last class, 25 to 28, as one because there's only one 25. Okay, now, I want you to take note of something here. Notice that the difference between consecutive lower class or consecutive upper class limits is the same number. For instance, the first class and the second class, if you look at the lower class limits, the lower class limit of the first class is 5, and the lower class limit of the next class is 9. If you subtract 5 and 9, you get 4. That number 4 is a special value. As a matter of fact, it's another definition. That is the definition of the class width. The class width is the difference between consecutive lower class limits or consecutive upper class limits. And if you notice, if you look at all the class limits in our table, they're all the same distance um, as far as consecutive lower or upper class limit. They're all four. So between five and nine, that's four units. Between nine and 13, that's four units. Between 13 and 17, that's four units. 17 and 21 is four. 21 to 25 is 4. So all the lower class limits have the same width or the same distance from each other, and it's the same for the upper class limits.